In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Michael Stipe assured us that it does, in fact, start with an earthquake, right? Um, somebody gets it. There's a gen, there's a gen exit right there. All right. It's hard to find some good news in these, uh, these passages that are all such gloom and doom, this, these end-of-the-world scenarios that we hear about today. You might ask why we are focusing on that. What does this have to do with any theme? Is there some, something we're supposed to get out of this? Well, on the one hand, there's this. We're coming up on the end of our year. Not just on the calendar, but actually even sooner than that, the end of our church year. That happens next weekend. It's the last Sunday after Pentecost. Sometimes we call that the Sunday of Christ the King. It's about Jesus coming into his kingdom. And of course, for Jesus to come into his kingdom, this kingdom has to go. And it's scary. This is what Jesus is saying. There will, there will be earthquakes. There will be wars and rumors of wars and all manner of things that will turn south, as it were, before there is some good news on the horizon. And there are a lot of times it feels like for us it is the end of the world. Some, some of you know this more than others. You've lost a partner. You've lost your livelihood. You've lost something that makes you feel that you understand who it is that you are. And that always feels somehow like the end of the world. You feel like you've lost everything. Everything's been taken away. Nothing will ever be the same. Your parents... Some of you, sadly, children. Everything feels like it's been taken away. And this is what Jesus is getting at with this passage about the temple. Now, what we know about this passage about the temple is that it's presented as Jesus predicting the destruction that will happen some 35 years after this story takes place. In 70 AD, the Roman army under Titus, who became the emperor, came and he took down the temple. Literally not one stone left on a stone. Now this is more than just a building. This is the sign for God's people that God is walking with them, is in their presence. We try, we, we try to get our heads around that in all of our parishes. We have you know, the reserve sack where we say that Jesus really is here with us. I don't know if it hits the same way for us as it did for someone then who could think of just one place where that was. I don't think it does hit that way. But this is not also something not new for God's people. There was the end of the world in Eden. Everything they knew was good and right is taken away. Even in Egypt, as bad as Egypt was, when they left Egypt, everything that they knew was taken away. You can listen to them grumble through the desert about how great it used to be in Egypt. They still wanted what had been taken away from them, as it were. The images we hear today are scary. They are disturbing. But losing everything that you thought made you who you were is scary too. 
And there's really nothing to say other than the promise that after this, and after it happened every single time, Jesus makes it better than it was before. In order for Jesus to come into his kingdom, this kingdom has to go away. You only have one king at a time. There are going to be things that happen that turn our world upside down that make us think that our world is finished, but it is the world as we know it. It's what requires faith. It's what requires us to put faith in Jesus' words that this is not the end of the world. This is, what does he call it? He calls it the birth pangs. Something new is coming. I hope that what's around the corner, I have faith that what's around the corner, is in fact the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus has been telling us his entire ministry. The kingdom of God is with you, is among you, is, King James calls it, the kingdom of God is at hand. What we see through a glass darkly, we will come to see clearly because we will see God face to face. But that will come when everything that thought we thought made us who we are, we're able to lay down and put aside. And ask Jesus who he wants us to be. You have an idea of that. You have listened to the parables. You have listened to the Beatitudes. You have heard the story of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now the question is, are you maybe not ready, but at least willing to become that? Are you maybe not ready, but willing to say that you want to find out who Jesus wants you to be and what kind of a world Jesus wants this to be what is it that you think is part of yourself that keeps that from happening what is it that will have to be not a stone left on a stone for that to happen it's not easy I know it's not easy we say it feels like the end of the world because that's what it really feels like but we know, if we believe this, if we believe this, these are, in fact, birth pains. Something new. Something better. We know this because we know that Jesus loves us. We know this because we know that Jesus loves you. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen.